fitness and wellness expert, naturopath, and adventure enthusiast, Wendy Peck. And my husband, Todd Isburner. He's a fundraising guru, men's mentor, and Bible scholar. And as a couple, we're going to share riveting breakthrough stories from our guests who've experienced the meaning of a changed life. Our hope is that you will be inspired, equipped, and entertained along your own life journey. So lean in, listen well. This could be your biggest breakthrough. Welcome to this next episode of Your Biggest Breakthrough. I'm Wendy Pett. I'm Todd Isburner. And Wendy, I don't know if you remember this, but a few years back, there was a movie, one of my all-time favorites, called Open Range. It was with Kevin Costner and Robert Duvall. And they were experiencing all this trouble over land claims by ranchers. And Costner and Duvall were, they were taken on the bad guys. And this included the, uh, the bad guy, Marshall. He was crooked. Mm-hmm. And so they wanted to take the Marshall out of the fight. So they chloroformed him. Mm-hmm. Remember what chloroform is? Yeah. It'll knock you out. Yeah. yeah. So I chloroform. So the bad guys find him just as he's kind of coming out of the stupor. And they tell him, get out there and fight those guys. But he said, I can't. You don't understand. I ain't right in the head. Uh, I ain't right in the head. Okay. Okay. So what does that have to do with today's show here, Todd? I mean, are you saying that you ain't right in the head well, or our guest? My, I hope you're not saying our guest. You never right know. I mean, could be Come all of us are not a little right in the head, but I do know this. Uh, I think our guests would agree that if we don't hear the voice of God, we ain't going to be right in the head. Oh, I see where you went yeah. with that. Very good. Very good. Yes. <laughs> Our guest today is um, our dear friend, Brenda Crouch, and she has overcome some serious self-talk, the voices and the lies that twist our perspective on God, family, career, church, and other relationships. She's going to share her story of coming through painful abuse and trauma and um, how she learned to hear the voice of God and embrace her true identity. So that's super cool. So we want to hear a little bit more about her. Todd's going to share her bio. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love uh, what she and Paul are all about oh, because man, they're all me too. about ministry. And Brenda Crouch's inspiring story of overcoming the lies of abuse is a powerful testimony of God's faithfulness and his grace for a hurting world. And man, do we not need that or what? Mm. And having once found identity in the modeling entertainment industry, mm-hmm. uh, her best performance was hiding the evidence of domestic abuse and insecurity behind that fragile mask of glamour. Mm. She's a dynamic speaker, a singer, an author whose heart-piercing message confronts the real issues which plague today's culture, keeping people from fulfilling their divine purpose. Uh, Brenda and her husband, American Christian broadcaster and film producer Paul Crouch Jr., they work together sharing the gospel through media, their TV co-hosts with a brand new show called Breakpoint. Huh? How about that? I love the name of that show. (laughs) That's awesome. So Brenda's also got a book. It's called Fight Forward. And it tackles the issues of identity wounds, helping readers overcome through restored authority in Jesus Christ. That is so good and right yes. on. So now look, more information can be found out about Brenda and her book and all that good stuff at Brenda Couch. Crouch. Crouch. Sorry, Brenda Crouch. But if you're on the couch and want to read her book, <laughs> yeah. go to Brenda Crouch.com. Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. Welcome to the show, Brenda. We are so, so glad to have you. (laughs) Oh my goodness. I love you guys. Thank you for having me. And you know what, Todd, some days like this morning, I feel like I ain't right in the head. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. (laughs) You could have been saying that about me. Yeah. You're going to, you're going to help us find find the real voice. Join the club. Join the club. Oh my goodness. Well, dear friend, we are so, so thrilled that you took the time to uh, be on the show today and we want to jump right to it because we know that there are people listening. I mean, men and women that have experienced some similar abuse and trauma that you have and, or they know of someone that has, right. Mm -hmm. Right. And so the question is, um, because people want to know, are there shortcuts to healing? Mm -hmm. And if so, what are Mm -hmm. they? (laughs) Let me tell you right now, there's no shortcuts. Mm -hmm. I tried, I tried Mm -hmm. to find all the shortcuts in life. And that's actually what got me into deeper trouble. Mm. But, you know, the process of healing, um, you know, we put, we kind of hang our hope sometimes on thinking that we're going to find that instant gratification, that instant healing and the instant results of, Mm. you know, our lives that bearing fruit, but the healing process is such a journey. And I want to say that your joy can be instant. 
your peace can be instant, mm. your power can be instant, because the, the Holy Spirit is a person, you know, uh, in the book of Acts, it talks about how that the Holy Spirit came upon them. And, and Jesus said the Holy Spirit would come to give you power. And we think of the Holy Spirit as someone who gives us this gift of power. But I just want to say he is the power. He mm -hmm. is the power that takes up residence within us. And so when we choose to say, you know what, I'm done doing it my way. Mm -hmm. I've gotten myself into a lot of trouble. And we choose to say, I'm not going to be a victim anymore. Lord, take up residency in me and teach me how to walk this out. He will do it. And you know, my process looked like uh, mentors coming into my life, counselors, um, you know, wonderful structures that God began to set for me. And uh, the process of getting into the word and learning what what does God say about my, my identity and about the situations I'm in? Those were the things that began to give me wisdom and they began to change things. And I began to see favor and the turn where God takes all that the enemy meant for your harm. He turns it and he uses it mm. for your good, for those who love him and are called according to his purposes. So, so good. Brenda, that, that oh, man. absolutely requires. I know, requires... I give you like a thousand answers. <laughs> I'm like, no, that's, that's incredible. Like that was preach Sorry? it, sister. And that could yeah. be like a rap. Like that's, Come on. Yeah, that's there we so go. Good. We're out of here. Well, I was, I was just thinking oh, that there has to be a foundation of faith to experience and believe the reality mm. of the power of Christ in us, yeah. correct? So mm. it has to start somewhere. Where did, yeah. where did yours start? Your faith journey. Well, I was really introduced to Jesus as my savior through my mother. Uh, I was seven years old and, you know, I asked him to come into my heart and be my savior. And, you know, God hears the prayers of little children. And, and I just believe that it was because of his love for me that he was, you know, the shepherd that left the 99 to run after the one when I was going through such a hard time later in my adult years. <clears throat> and you know, I, I have to say that I experienced that salvation on a much more experiential level uh, when I encountered Jesus in my hardship as an adult. And he became my Jesus, not just my mama's Jesus or my grandma's Jesus, you know. And uh, so I, I do think that even our salvation is a process of every day working it out with him. Such a good word right mm. there, because sometimes uh, people think, oh, I'll just say the prayer. I'm uh -huh. good. And yeah. I don't need to do anything else, but it Get is it's a journey. Got my ticket to heaven. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, right. it's a journey and it's a process yeah. and it allows us to become, you know, pruned yeah. so that we can oh, flourish man. pruned again so we can flourish more and become mm. more like christ every step of the way. And so, um, I've read your book, Brenda, mm. and I've, I've cried. I've, I've, I've just uh, had joy in reading mm. it. I've, it's just been amazing. And actually this is it. If you're watching on YouTube, it's, <laughs> it's uh, right here. Brenda Crouch fight forward Yeah, I love the title. and reclaim the real you. Mm -hmm. And I think so often people are hiding behind their trauma and, yes. and someone listening needs to hear this message, Brenda, because people are self-medicating because they don't, oh. they're in such shame. They're, yeah. they don't know how to address it. And so um, let's talk a little bit about, just the journey of, mm -hmm. of what you've been through. Well, yeah, I just, I just oh, want to say too. Yeah. No, no, no. I yeah. usually always jump no, forward and he's like, wait, no, wait, wait. We're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're actually heading down the same track. We actually are. But I, I was just thinking, so, I mean, Brenda, you had a good foundation already built yeah. as a child, as a young person, as an adolescent, but somewhere uh, <laughs> that twisted and your self-identity went south. So yeah. what happened in that process and why has that become so important to you, this whole idea of identity? Well, uh, you know, through my mother, I, I have the lineage of preachers and pastors and missionaries and just great faith people. And I heard stories all my life about the faith uh, that they had and how God answered many prayers. So I was fed the Bible. I was fed. I was taught the word of God. Thank you, Lord, for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was such a, an amazing foundation that I believe covered me in so many other situations, but I also lived in the, um, this humanly fragile home where my father came from a family lineage of beautiful, talented, wonderful people who were also addicted, addic chemical addictions, alcohol addictions. Um, there was abuse, there was incest, 
many things throughout the generations, even murder, as I continue to dig mm. throughout the family history, um, as I wrote about in, uh, I think, the introduction of my book. And, you know, those things were not my father's fault, but during a time, and he was, uh, you know, he was a victim of abuse in that system. But during a time of his life, when he was in a very dark place, he had, you know, what people used to call backslidden. Uh, mm -hmm. He had really fallen away from his uh, any kind of intimacy with the Lord. And I question whether he really had an intimacy with the Lord. I think he was trying to, um, you know, live some kind of holy life in, in, as a more performance-based thing for God. You know, that was mm -hmm. kind of the old school way of thinking. We didn't really understand grace. And uh, so during this time, you know, he had had some moral failures and there was a lot of troubles in my parents' marriage. And, um, you know, it, it was a time when I, I was eight years old and my father abused me. And I know that he regretted this season. Mm -hmm. uh, my father was filled with shame and he was filled with secrets. My father was an extremely handsome man, uh, extremely talented musically. And he was funny and always the life of the party and everybody loved him. That's one reason it was very difficult for me to write this book. Um, but, you know, both my parents are in heaven now and I know that they are watching over me from those the, that great cloud of witnesses saying you go baby girl because this is what mm. matters mm. and uh you know an understanding of the fullness of truth and, and our freedom in christ but what happened to me was that i became wrapped in this shame uh, you know when you're i have to explain to uh, please allow me um the time to say that when a child is suffers a sexual trauma, you know, the abuse uh, as at a, such a young age, they don't have the maturity to be able to uh, process these things. And oftentimes they will split in their, um, in their identity or in their uh, consciousness, and they will uh, kind of file this away and compartmentalize the memory because it's so traumatic. This is exactly what I did. <clears throat> and it was years later, as a young adult that I began to have these dreams and they always involved my father. They were icky dreams. They were things that made me feel just really dirty and awful. And I was kind of, I didn't want to tell anybody about these dreams, but they were the same dreams I was having repetitively for years. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, it was through a process of counseling uh, that I was able to kind of come to terms with some of those, but I still wondered, you know, was that my father? And I just could not come to terms with that because I adored him. I loved him so much. And, you know, we had really bonded over music and, but my father was also very emotionally distant. And so I always hated myself as a child and I took that into my adult relationships. So as I was explaining the child that has to, that is traumatized that way has to traumatically bond with the person that they need love and support from, um, you know, and so they, and they need that relationship. And so there's this bonding an unhealthy bonding that can take place that then leads them into often abusive relationships. Well, so the, this was a key for me later on in life, wondering, I never saw my father beat my mother. What in the world is going on here? And so the abusive system in our family was more secretive and it was behind this beautiful facade of this gorgeous family, this talented family who loved the Lord. We go out and sing for Jesus. And I, and I, I thought, how did I end up here where I, you know, I have loaded guns being held to my head, broken bones, things that were, this was a marriage you were in. Yeah. Yes. And, and I had two marriages, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just going to say that for, for, mm -hmm. to give somebody hope out there yes. because oftentimes, you know, people fall into this trap of, well, well if I just find the right person and, and I want to be loved and, and their focus is on the wrong thing, trying to fix something deeper. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> I know I'm kind of all over the map here, but it's a very complex um, a, a foundation that I had and a, a complex story in that, you know, I, I had that split thing going on. And so I had a very double-minded way of approaching things, a lot of fear and a lot of faith. Mm -hmm. So it was like, how do I, how do I maneuver and navigate through all this? And I was trying to use my, my carnal wisdom Right. Mm -hmm. You know, that I was raised with and I was just getting into deeper messes. And so, you know, I want to say that I, uh, in the process of all this, God really taught me the grace as I began to heal. And, you know, my father, 
con- he confessed on his deathbed and I was able mm. to pray with him. Mm. Thank you, Lord, yeah. for being able to put all that under the blood and help walk him through the process of forgiving himself. That's so good. I mean, and let God me put a pin loves. in that real quick, Brenda, yeah. because before he was, he was sick, you actually had an encounter at a restaurant with him that you yeah. actually yeah. were able to ask him if he yeah. did this, right? Yeah. So share a little bit about that first. And then, yeah. yeah, I tried, I, I, you know, mustered up the courage to uh, ask my father if he would, uh, if he had any idea of what had happened, I shared the dreams, I shared the counseling, I shared the things that I felt. And I, it was my plea, dad, you know, help me figure oh. this out. And there was this little part of me deep inside that knew, but I just, you know, I needed, I just needed to ask him. And of course, he changed the subject mm-hmm. and he, you know, he was just kind of aloof about it. And I knew that was the system I grew up with. You know, he's emotionally distant. Remember, mm-hmm. uh, we couldn't talk about things that were vulnerable with each other. Mm-hmm. And so um, I very quickly went back into the kind of social mode with him. And, you know, it, it was like I said, years later when he broke and he knew he had to ask forgiveness and it was on his deathbed. And by that time I'd already worked through it. I knew, and I said, God, bring this out for the sake of healing. And God answered those prayers. And I'm just so thankful for the way that God moves and how he loves us. His mercy is new every morning. It was new for my father, just like it was for me. He loves the victim but he also loves the victimizer mm. who's trapped, wow. who it doesn't know how often to come out of that awful thing. And our society shames people for the littlest things. And we're in this cancel culture now. We don't know how to extend the hand of grace and mercy. And listen, people need help. We don't just trust them to know how to, you know, they need the process of healing. Right. But God wants to transform anybody that has any kind of problem right. and so stop good. Michael's so good. That is a powerful <laughs> message. The, the really, it's the message of forgiveness. It is. Yes, and it is. the very fact that you were able to maintain even after the the discovery of this uh, in your dreams, and then through counseling, and yeah. the, this awareness, this actually did happen. But Dad is not going to deal with it. The fact mm-hmm. that you didn't turn like so many people do, turn bitter right. or resentful yeah. mm-hmm. or vengeful in any way. Yeah. Because there are some right now tuned in, Brenda, who are going through this very thing. Yeah. And they don't know how to get free of their own yeah. anger yeah. and the fact that this person is not owning up to it. How and, do you yeah. how do you go through that? And their victimhood becomes idolatry. The, yes. Right? Yes. On yes. some levels. It really yeah. does. Yeah. Mm. Because our victimization, our victimhood identity <clears throat> becomes our excuse for not having to own up to the things that we do to um, participate. I, I've often said that codependency is a form of idolatry. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> because you're looking to another person to fulfill something and you're willing to give away your authority and your power for, that God gave to you uh, and your personhood to get that thing you think you need. Right. It's a weird thing, weird dynamic. But, and, and so I don't say that to offend people as if I'm saying, listen, the victim uh, did something to deserve it. That is no, not what no. I'm saying at all. Mm-hmm. Right, and, um, and but the, what, what the happens, perpetrator did, it's not okay. Yeah. It's not okay. Right. And listen, I would fight for any child if I ever saw no. a child being hurt that way you, my teeth would, my fangs would come out. I mean, I I would be fighting for that child, but the, the Jesus, the Christ in me has such compassion for this broken state of humanity. And I believe that it's uh, the reason I titled my book in this way is that the enemy is, you know, he, uh, the Bible says that he roams about like a, a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And so he's out to kill, steal, and destroy. And I believe that he uses the woundings of our soul Mm -hmm. as early as our childhood. He targets us like there's a bullseye on your back. And he wants, what does he want from us? He wants to steal our identity. What is that ultimately? It's the image of God. We are the image bearers of our creator. And if we don't know him, we can't know who we are. 
you know, uh, my friend Jonathan Kahn says it so beautifully when he says, I can't say my name without saying his name first. I am. Mm. I am Brenda Crouch. I mean, that's just so beautiful to me. And so, uh, you know, I think that it's important to know that we have to forgive but how do you get there? And I think that's what you're kind of pointing at today. And, and, you know, again, I just have to say, I couldn't have done this without the residence of the Holy Spirit being the power, being my eyes, being my heart, my compassion. And that I didn't have this kind of uh, what I used to call like perverted mercy. Uh, it was really more of a clear understanding the bigger picture as God sees us and the brokenness that the enemy does these things to families and that the only way out is through forgiveness. We can't just get stuck and raising our fist and being bitter and be, becoming hardened. And uh, I do mention that in, the, in a chapter about the butterflies fight through the cocoon and how the wings will harden if we, uh, you know, if someone was to, clip that open and and the wings they didn't have the struggle they didn't have the fight and then they can't fly and they won't live long so mm. it's very important to remain in that place of i'm going to fight lord but i'm going to fight the good fight yeah. and i'm going to do this as you enable me i can do all things through christ who strengthens me oh that gives Amen. so much so much encouragement and hope because people sometimes feel like the, the struggle cannot have a good outcome because right. they're exhausted they're weary they hate the struggle but that's a great illustration of the butterfly, by the way. I think that's that's really cool. Yeah. So if you really want to, if you want to get to that place where you're going to fly, you're going to have to go through the struggle. Amen. I want to go back to your childhood for just a moment, Brenda, because mm -hmm. uh, you're eight years old, and uh, the years following your adolescence, and your teen <laughs> years, and your early adult years, uh, you'd said earlier that as a young as a young girl, you you hated yourself. Yeah. And obviously, you didn't exactly know why you hated yourself. Mm -hmm. So, but what did you do to compensate for that mm -hmm. that ugly feeling of hating yourself. Well, that, I'm glad you brought that up again. Uh, that was the trade-off that I believe the enemy's lie that, you know, he hands you that forbidden fruit. He hands you that lie and says, take a bite. Temptation. And, yes. And for me, uh, I didn't know why I hated myself. I just did. And I believe that it's because I had, I was deeply wrapped in shame because of the abuse. And, and some of that was even about religious control. You know, I was raised with a lot more legalism. And yet I had a mother who wanted to, wanted to be free from that. So it was a process for her. But in my journey, you know, I, I traded the person that I really hated and was ashamed of. I kind of buried her. I put her away and said, you shut up. You're going to sit down and I'm taking over. We're wow. going to fix this thing. And, and it, you know, I didn't realize I'd done that, but it was me trying to fix me constantly. And so what I did is I began to project this image that I thought was more lovable. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, you know, it, it took on kind of a glamorous thing. I grew up in Nevada and, you know, I was, I saw, uh, I wasn't going out to the, the shows and things, but, you know, as, as I got older, I was seeing showgirls and, you know, this culture all around me and models. And I thought that's, you know, that's the look and that's, that's, you know, that's what I want to look yeah. like. That's yeah, beauty. Yeah. That's exciting. You know, Dolly Parton <laughs> talked about that once, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, um, and I, I entered, you know, pageant systems and because it was this wonderful platform for me to be able to sing. And, and I really believe that God blessed that season. He for just sure. gave me such favor. And I always talked about the Lord and I, you know, told people about Jesus. So this was going on too. I wanted to, but here's why my motivation for writing the book is it's not that we, we often don't see where we're going wrong because we're so busy projecting and sometimes we're even trying to project Jesus or mm. an image of Jesus. We don't even know him, mm. but we don't know him till we encounter him in those dark, hard places that we don't even want to go. And it's so perverted, you know, uh, distortion. You yeah, know? yeah. Yeah. And so it was just really this lie that I began to take on as, as a, an identity. And I, and I was a victim and, and I saw things wrong. My, my relationship dynamics were a mess and people didn't love me for me because I was projecting something that wasn't real. And it took a long time for me to get to that place of, you know what, just going to be me. And that, 
Such if you a good love word. me, okay, but I know who does love me. Mm. And that's when things really began to turn for me yeah. and letting go, just letting go. Amen. So important. What freedom and letting go and to uh, just shut down the counterfeit projection of, yeah. of um, you know, trying to get everyone to, to like you mm -hmm. uh, and that people pleasing kind of place and that perfectionism and mm -hmm. all the things that come with it. And just knowing that we are perfect in Christ. And that's exactly yes. what you discovered as, as you uh, put a stake in the ground of knowing Amen. your identity in Jesus. And I love that. And um, I kind of want to take us back. Um, I know we kind of keep going back and forth, but back to um, your father's bedside mm -hmm. and um, just the, um, can you tell the more details and the emotion and, and mm -hmm. how that all took place? Because uh, I just always think of um, uh, the, the criminal on the cross next to Jesus, uh, right? And yeah. um, how he loves us all. And when yeah. we take that moment to, to ask for forgiveness and surrender, then um, great things happen. So share that. That's so good, Wendy. Yeah. Uh, you know, we were all standing in the room at the hospice house and this was just, I don't know, a day or two before he actually passed and he became heavily sedated with drugs. And so he was still conscious enough. We were singing some old gospel songs and my cousins were there, my sister and some other people in the room. And it was a happy moment. And so we were all just shocked when we looked at his face and suddenly he's got that crying like a baby, twisted face, like pain, like grueling pain. And he couldn't even hardly mutter the words. And he just, his eyes were locked on me. And he kept saying, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so mm. sorry. Mm. And everybody's like, what's happening? You know, and uh, his wife, he had remarried, came over and was, oh, there's nothing for you to be sorry for. You know, you're a good and godly man. Mm. And, uh, you know, I said, you know, everybody, I, I, I think I know what he's referring to. Let me just whisper in his ear and talk to him for a minute. Mm. And they all kind of, you know, they were in the room, but kind of gave a little break for me to talk with him. And I said, dad, daddy, I know, I already know. And I said, I've already forgiven you. And I said, but it's what's important is that you forgive yourself. Mm. And see, these are critical moments. I couldn't yeah. make that moment about me because I knew he was facing eternity. Yeah. I've never done this before. I've talked about this, but you know, that's what's so important for all of us. I knew he knew I've got to stand before God. How do I do this? I'm so mm -hmm. scared. Mm -hmm. And so I said, dad, you've got to forgive yourself. And he yeah. said, I don't think I can. And I said, you know what? The blood of Jesus trumps every sin. It is greater than all of our sin. Do you believe that? He said, I want to. And I said, do you believe he forgives you? I want to. This is a man who sang for the Lord, you know, recorded albums for the Lord, ministered on platforms, and he sang this on his deathbed. And I said, if I say the words, would you pray with me? Because see, I'd come to that place of freedom. I'd come out of my shame. I was okay. And he said, yes. And we prayed and, you know, as we prayed together, accepting the forgiveness and asking the Lord to help him to forgive himself and to let it go, to lay it down at his feet, to nail it to the cross. That was his moment of the thief on the cross who said, would you remember me in paradise? Would you remember me? Um, you know, because we come with a question, we come not knowing. And so in that moment, I it's like God gave me this vision as I was praying and I saw Jesus, the first of many brethren with his arms stretched wide open, waiting to receive my daddy. That's so beautiful. And that he would finally step into that fullness in Christ as he w crossed over into, into his presence, physical presence. And, and then the, you know, the thought, well, when he died, i we felt his spirit leave. And something clicked inside of me, like my internal compass, my GPS clicked on, <clears throat> excuse me. And the Lord said to me, daughter, I don't want you to be afraid. 
because I wasn't ready to lose my dad. This was a big deal. Sure, you love and he said, dad. I don't want you to be afraid. I'm your father mm-hmm. and you're going to be okay from this moment forward. I will be with you. And I knew This was a new day. Something had Mm. broken. Something had changed. And then what really gripped me was how many of us have an opportunity to come clean before God, to stand naked before him, to be like the book of Corinthians tells us to look into the mirror of his glory, where we are changed. We are transformed. But instead, so I'm so sorry, allergies. So many of us are like the man in Proverbs who comes, looks in the mirror, reads the word of God, and then walks away and forgets it. Like the man who looks at his image in a mirror and then walks away and forgets what he looked like. How many of us are walking around claiming to be followers of Christ, and yet we're doing that? And then we come all the way to the end of our life and realize I've got some unresolved issues, some things I've buried. Jesus wants us to be free in him and to let go of those things and to trust him with our worst of our worst and to be able to say, would you remember me? Can you change me? Can you take this and can you be the power in my life and the glory in my life and help me to fulfill what you've called me to do here while I'm living and while I'm breathing. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yes, yeah, preach it, yeah. preach it, go, go. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> so I mean, good. that it's is the, the beauty of Oof. the gospel of Jesus and the blood Amen. on the cross. Yeah, yeah. There is no limit to his grace and no limit to his forgiveness. But I, I love the fact, Brenda, that there's really, there's two sides to this. Because for those who have victimized, there's forgiveness. Yeah. Yes. For those who have been the victim, there is an opportunity And this is where your life is an example of this, to have compassion and grace, the same compassion and grace God offers us toward that perpetrator. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it might be that you've been offended, you've been abused, you've been hurt, uh, and that person has never attempted reconciliation, never even admitted. And Brenda, I have a feeling because I think there are some folks listening. They may never. Right. Exactly. You're right. You're You're right, Wendy. Your dad may have passed. Mm-hmm. and not given you the opportunity that that was given mm-hmm. to you yeah. for this to be completely reconciled or the opportunity to give himself that that opportunity yeah. um so what what <laughs> happens in that situation where where there there isn't the same um the, the same way to receive mm-hmm. from that person what you were able to receive yes. how, how do you go on because i have a feeling you would have gone on and stayed free and not gotten yeah. sucked into a bitterness or resentment Yeah. Well, I want to say that, uh, again, I had to come through a process of my own healing and my coming to terms with this before this happened. So I was already there and God had given me, uh, see, it's the person of Christ in us that gives us wisdom. He he teaches us boundaries. He teaches us how to love and have compassion for people that we might have used to run from. And we don't fear anymore because we're free from coming under that control. We are walking in our divine authority, Mm. but you can't do that if you're walking in in bitterness or in unforgiveness, you have no peace and you, you can't, you've clogged up your line with God. Yes. Yes. And so often you're idle. The people are saying, but why God, why did you allow this to happen? And then well, they, they get that exactly. anger. Exactly. And, yeah. Yeah. And, that and that's where that I dimension. want to say, you know, we live in this fallen world where terrible things, atrocities that break my heart every day when I see these things. And I sometimes want to say, God, I just don't understand. But you know what? It, it, they're out of the beauty that we can choose to see is that God's mercy reaches into that and rescues us out. He, he weeps with us. It's that Shekinah glory we've heard about. You know what that means? That is the, in the Hebrew, it's the female term, like a mother that will come and lie with us in the dust and hold us and grieve with us and build us back up and heal us. That's the process. So we're talking about kind of two different things, the process And sometimes God holds, he withholds what we want to get us there because it's about us laying it down. It's about us letting go and saying, 
I'm going to lay these things down. I'm going to choose you and your way. It doesn't make sense to me, but I'm going to choose you because I trust you and believe that you ultimately have my good in mind. See, when I obeyed that, when I chose that, God did such a work in me that I was ready to be able to step into that place and be the hands and feet of Christ for my father. That's a really awful thing to have to come out and say, you know, mm -hmm. and he could barely mutter any words. And so I think that we have to really um, understand that this is about the process uh, that that's active within us, you know, this process of healing is, is the forgiveness. Yes. And so I was very blessed to be able to pray with my father. Yes. I thank God every day. I believe that the part of that is because I was covering it. I was bathing it in prayer and asking the Lord for that specifically, but I was not asking for it just for me, right? but right. for the whole good. Mm. Okay. And again, Going back to we when we agree with heaven's uh, agenda, yeah. what we say and do is done. Yes. And so this happened as a result of the process at work. And so it was something that my father benefited probably more in that moment, mm -hmm. even than me. Mm -hmm. But I benefited so much more than it would have been even sitting at that breakfast table and him saying, you know what, honey, I'm sorry, that was me, you know totally different kind of a thing and it was hard but it was good and it was rewarding and fruitful in the end mm. so good yeah and brenda you'd mentioned how uh it's really it's all about knowing the heart of god by knowing christ right mm -hmm. and I, I got thinking you know you can't really trust someone you don't really know yeah and so part of your your life story and your message is to help people really begin to hear the voice of god and connect with him in a real intimate way. Yeah. And yet you say that doesn't really just happen with a snap of a finger. Right. It's not an instant process. I mean, it, fact, could, it could, but it, it rarely could. It doesn't happen. But there is a process yeah. that Shazam. you talk about. Yeah, right. Yeah, we wish. <laughs> we wish. But you talked about, you know, there, there are going to be struggles, there are going to be dark times. And those are the times where we really get to mm. develop that intimate relationship and get to know mm. him. I think that is an awesome message. And so many of us need to hear yeah. that every single yeah. day because we crab and we whine about our struggles mm -hmm. and we question God rather than seeing it as that invitation to get to know him better. Yeah. Yes. And, I, and I look at how, um, since you know, you've gone through this process and you know your identity in Christ and how um, through all the, the trauma and the things that have gone on in your life, now you're, you're in a different place with who mm -hmm. you are and, oh, and your relationship yeah. with God. And he's blessed mm. you abundantly with, with mm. your marriage with Paul yeah. and, and the ministry. And it's like, yeah. it just continues to ripple yeah. uh, through uh, of God's goodness. And yeah. so I love that. So there's power mm. in that surrender and that forgiveness yeah. piece. Is, is all so, the perfectionism gone or is there just a tiny well, little bit? <laughs> <laughs> You I'm saw me trying to move that candle. <laughs> yeah, right. Paul, Brenda and I have talked checking. about that before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, okay. perfectionism. Do I have time to yeah, respond go ahead. to what you said? Yes. Perfectionism ahead. is like our way of trying to live up to a standard that we think is better. Yeah. And man, that's, uh, I love how my friend, Dr. Mark Sharona puts it. He says, perfectionism is not your personality. It's your enemy. Yes. And it will shut you down. Mm -hmm. It'll keep you from fulfilling your purpose. So oh. I constantly have to kind of go back to that wiring and say, okay, mm -hmm. we're going to get real organic here and real authentic. And we're just going to be who we are in this moment. Okay. And, you know, when you said that thing about um, knowing Christ intimately, mm -hmm. and often we think that we do because we have our, you know, our little quiet time every day and, we say our 15 minute or hour prayer or whatever it is we our formulas that we do. And I am not mocking that. I think we need right. all that. Yeah. But um, if that's what we're limited to and we don't invite God into the realness of our life and mm -hmm. walking with him, that's prayer without ceasing. Mm -hmm. I want to point to Peter because, you know, Peter was this, he was the dude who was walking on the water to Jesus, <laughs> man, if it's you, Lord, bid me to come eager, that zealous, that was me. Huh. That was me mm. in those years. And I wanted to do the great exploits for God and all these things. But see, Peter, I don't think really knew who he was or what he was capable of. And, and, you know, when Jesus said upon this rock, 
Jesus was prophesying because see, a few days later, Peter is finding himself denying the Christ when, when he said, I wouldn't do that. And here the rooster's crowing the third time and he's just denied him three times. The shame. The shock and the, the shame. shock. Mm -hmm. The, oh my goodness, what have I done? It's this, it, it may be over for me. What have I done? And I believe that we all have to come to that moment, mm -hmm. that crossroads, that encounter where we see not just who we thought we were, but who we're not. Mm -hmm. So Amen. that the Christ, the person of Christ, the mercy and the grace. See, it's the grace we have to encounter first. All the other stuff will come. It gets taken care of as the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to forgive, the ability to move forward. But we have to first come in, in uh, have an encounter with his grace. Yeah. And it was that moment for Peter that Jesus was prophesying, it's upon this rock, I will build my church. And it was you know, days later that the new church was born and he brought 3000 in one day in a day with no media, yeah. you know, right. no, no internet. Media. <laughs> yeah. No and Facebook so, ads. yeah, oh, that is so transform, tra transforming process as Christ, yes. as we find our identity in Christ. Yes. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Brenda. I, I love uh, everything that you share. I love you as an individual. You're such a dear, sweet friend, love Thank your you. heart and your message. And, um, before we, we go, and I know this has been a really, um, you know, kind of deep subject and, mm -hmm. and pretty, um, in, intense, uh, if you will, let's kind of leave maybe a little bit on a lighter note. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's kind of just one thing that maybe our <laughs> listeners don't know about Brenda Crouch? Or maybe I don't know about Brenda. Okay, say it, say it one more time because I broke what, up. That's okay. What is one thing that maybe our listeners don't know about you? Like, do you have a hidden talent? Oh. Do you have a... Well... Full, to full disclosure full dis time now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Inquiring minds. Oh, gosh. There's probably many things. And I'm having that, you know, weird morning. It's, it's storming and I'm like in a foggy, foggy head. But I will say that I came out of uh, my background when I was in my Ruth journey uh, in Dallas. God had moved me from uh, California to Texas for a season, and uh, I left a lucrative career there in design, came here, and had to build it from scratch, and God just blew my mind with such favor, and uh, so my background is interior design, and then wow. there came a season where he said, okay, I want you to put it away. I'm going to dry that brook up because I want you to, uh, I want you to pursue full-time ministry. And I want you to share the message that, that I've put on your heart because people need to know the way out. And That's I was crazy. standing in Israel on this Vista overlooking the Dead Sea, looking straight at Mount Moab. Mm. And I'm going, I can't believe my eyeballs are looking at this right now. Uh -huh. And this was the first time I'd been to Israel years ago. And I, um, as I'm looking at this, I'm realizing Ruth came out of, that was the redemption that came out of Moab. And for the, the viewers, Moab was a, a culture that was, and a, a people that came out of incest. Mm -hmm. So I'm going, mm -hmm. oh wow. my goodness, the identity, the yeah. shame, the wow. darkness, the rejection, That's the problems. Cool. And Ruth came out of Moab and was the story, it was the story of the romance of redemption as God provided for her and turned her life around and they brought her to Boaz. Mm. And so I, I guess mm. we could call Paul my Boaz. But, uh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's good. Yeah. I so yeah, that's my, that. that's, good. that's my little, <laughs> my background. No, I love yeah. it. Thank you for sharing. And I'm going to put you on the spot one more time, if okay. possible. Okay. As we go out, <laughs> as we go out, I know <laughs> that my dear sister, Brenda has the most beautiful gift of song. Oh, and I know you're like, Oh, <laughs> is there just one little stanza oh, that you would go out and sing for us? Well, you know, I sing songs every day, just worship songs that I adore and love, but we're talking about grace today. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I know this is kind of an old standby, but you know what? I really mean it from the heart. Oh, yeah. um, I just want to say amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved 
a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Thank you, Jesus. Oh my gosh, praise God. That's my favorite all time <laughs> song. I'm crying over here. Beautiful. I love, love you, Brenda. You. Love you. you. Bless Thank you. you and please, uh, if you're listening, go to brendacrouch.com, get her CDs, listen to her ministry, and uh, do all that you can to be in touch with Brenda and Paul. Uh, and uh, real quick, before you go, uh, we, we have a, a free signed copy of your fight forward, reclaim yeah. the real you. And the way you get this is um, if you will email info at Brenda uh, she will send the first five people that subscribe to Brenda Crouch.com, a physical mailing uh, copy of your book. So that's yeah. exciting. All right. Yeah. God bless you, my friend. And we'll see you really soon. God bless you guys. Love you Thanks, both. Brenda. Love you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Oh my gosh, she just sang my very yeah. favorite song. That I mean, me. in tears. Uh, that Ooh. got me. We had some goosebumps going on that <laughs> Oh, one. did you? Okay, that's good. Yeah, well, oh. she's a beautiful soul and mm, a great mm, mm, inspiration mm. and a tremendous encourager. And I think yeah. for me personally, again, just a reminder that the struggles are not a bad thing Yeah. Uh, or the times in which we have been, uh, you know, placed at, um, in a bad spot by others. Right. There's opportunity to grow deeper and to get more intimate with Jesus. And I know that's easier said than done, but that is a reality. And that's yeah. one we want to hang on to. Yeah, 100%. So if this uh, episode blessed you and maybe you know someone that it, it could bless, make sure you share it yeah. and uh, subscribe to the show. And if you are struggling, um, so often I'm working with women that have had similar issues yeah. and they um, kind of just mask it with um, maybe unhealthy habits, whether it's, uh, you know, eating poorly and lack of exercise and just that lack of understanding their identity in Christ. Check out um, uh, my Visibly Fit coaching program over at wendypet.com and uh, we can talk through that a little bit more. We, all of us, want you to be free yeah. and, uh, and live a long, yes. uh, free life in yes. Christ. So, Wend wendypet.com, seriously, it's W E N D I E. P-E-T-T, -T, wendypet.com. We'll put awesome. that in the show notes. Too. Yeah, yeah. All right. Blessings to you all. We'll see you next time yeah. on Your Biggest Breakthrough. Have a great day.